Welcome to Click Data's course on the basics in Excel. My name is Sasha Noren. Each part of the Microsoft Office system package has a specific job, it seems. Word, fundamentally for word processing, PowerPoint for drawing, Outlook, mainly for email, and Excel for calculating. But like with all applications in the Microsoft Office, Excel also has other functions. For instance, database work, making electronics forms, and for data synthesis. It's not always the case that the features in one program are best suited for everything you want to do. Every once in a while, it's just better to use, for example, text word tables inside Excel. But for the most part, Excel is your calculating tool and analytical tool. In the basic course, we'll mainly pay attention to calculation capability. In the advanced course, we'll look more at analytical synthesis and working with databases. We'll begin by getting familiar with the Excel environment, or milieu, since it requires some getting used to. And by doing so, we'll serve as a solid platform on which to learn the rest of the application. All insertions of information are done in cells, for instance. There are tools called worksheets, workbooks, and tabs. All this should become clear as we go along. Calculating is the basic function of Excel. We use formulas to count and to estimate, but there are actually many different tools that can hasten inputs of formulas and data, and we'll discover some of these in this chapter. Chapter 3 covers different ways of formatting cells. Here, we'll talk about how to format quantities or amounts of data and how to color lines and borders. You can even see Cal Chapter 3 covers different ways of formatting cells. Here, we'll talk about how to format quantities or amounts of data and how to color lines and borders. You can even set conditions on how to perform formatting. Usually, your worksheets and workbooks will be filled with a lot of data. So when you want to get a bird's eye view of what you have in them, it's a good idea to use diagrams and tables. We'll get a closer view of how to do this in Chapter 4. And thanks to the chart wizard, making these time-saving features is easier than ever. Perhaps the most common formula is the sum, S-U-M, function. The next most common is most likely the one for figuring averages. But for them, and many others, there are different functions with the same name and these we'll examine in more detail in this chapter. A function is a predefined formula that Excel writes for you. So, in this context, it's vital for you to be able to determine the difference between absolute and relative cell reference. In the last chapter of the basic course, we will see how we handle printouts of worksheets and workbooks. For instance, we'll show you how to get the pages to look the way you want them. Among other things, we'll put in diagrams, headers, footers, and margins. Well, lots to do, so let's get going. Welcome. When you first open an Excel sheet, the task pane opens here to the right. Under Getting Started, there's a pull-down menu filled with information paths to get you going. For instance, different categories like Help, Research, or maybe Start a New Workbook. In here, we can start a blank workbook, or if you need to go to Office Online, you can fetch new templates. And you can go to On My Computer if you have other files you need to reach inside the directories of your computer. 
I'll talk a bit more about the task pane in a little while. Right now, however, I'll close it. Make a setting for the task pane in the following way, if it appeals to you. Go to Tools and Options, and in Show, under the View tab, choose whether you want the task pane on or not at startup. Clicked off, the task pane will not be on when opening up, for example, an Excel workbook. I'll OK it. The environment of the Excel application looks, for the most part, the same as other Office applications. We have the menus at the top, and as we go downwards, you can see the different toolbars. I'll click on the menus, and as I go past, I notice that they're pretty short when I pull them down. There's a little double arrow down here, and if I click on it, the menu grows longer if you need anything else inside. This is a device Microsoft has added to thin out the access to all the commands and subcommands available on the pull-down menus, since they can interfere when you work. If you're inside, say, a workbook, and you go up and down to the menus for command items, they're short enough not to disturb you. You can adjust this as well. You go into Tools, Customize, and in the Options tab of this dialog box, choose Show Fill Menus after a short delay. Alternately, you can choose Always Show Full Menus. In this course, we want to see the full menus each time we work. So I'll choose this and then close. Now, as we go through the menus, we see them fully spread down. Under the menus, we have the toolbars, of course, and depending on how many toolbars we need, this area is expandable. In View, under Toolbars, we see that Standard and Formatting have been selected, and this is reflected by the fact that we have these two visible right now under Menus. I can pull one out by manipulating the dotted lines with the cursor and see that, yes, this one is the standard toolbar. Do the same to the one above and we see that it's also named, this is the formatting toolbar. Furthest out to the edge, there are X marks to close the toolbars. To get the toolbar back, I just go back to View, Toolbars and re-click it. It returns to where it was before, like so. I'll take the standard toolbar like this, lift it on its blue border and stick it into place above. Pulling on the blue area of the formatting toolbar, I draw it over to the left side and release it. And we see that it assumes a vertical aspect, if you care to work from this angle. If I select the dotted lines and pull the toolbar out of this aspect, I can lift it and drop it under the other one, like this. If I want to zoom in to a section of the worksheet, I search along the toolbars and do not see the button for the function. It isn't here, but if I search above, I see that the button row discontinues and hides beneath, like this. And here, I see the Zoom tool. If I alter the Zoom view, Excel understands that now you want to see this tool and fits it into the toolbar more visibly. That way I can reach it more easily next time round.